The Winnebago 4s at 38D floor plan is 39 feet, 10 inches long. It has three large slide outs throughout the coach. You have one in the bedroom, one in the kitchen, and a long slide on the passenger side of the RV. It gives you a lot of good walkability space with those opposing slides inside. It is built on the Freightliner chassis with a 6.7 liter Cummins engine that is going to be in the back of the RV because it is a diesel pusher motorhome. Up here in the front of the RV, you have what Winnebago is known for in a lot of their motorhomes, which is their super structure, which is basically what the entire front of this RV is. And it gives you an amazing panoramic view. So whenever you're taking your motorhome to a beautiful place, you have an epic window to take in the mountains or the beach or wherever you're driving. Coming over here to the side of the RV, you have heated and powered mirrors as well as a side view camera so that whenever you flip your blinker on, you're going to another lane, you can see the lane next to you. It's really handy. Let's go take a look at the awnings. On this side of the Forza, we have two awnings, one small one over your passenger side door, which is really useful if it's raining or something like that. And then you have a large patio awning. Nice thing about that awning is it's one click. This awning has been amazing. And it also has an LED light strip on both the patio awning as well as the passenger awning up in the front. The benefit to having a 40 foot long motorhome is that you have multiple storage bays in the Forza that are completely passed through. So you get a ton of places to put basically whatever you want. And before going inside, there's a couple of things I wanna mention about the storage bays in particular. One is something that I think Winnebago did a really good job of, which is this is your one key that you can use to unlock all these storage bays as well as open the door to the Forza and use for your ignition key. So you definitely don't wanna lose this, but it's also convenient because you don't have to cart around a ton of different keys all the time. All right, let's go ahead and take a look inside the storage base. You have a nice painted latch right here. These are extremely sturdy and well-locked doors. We've had issues in the past whenever we've been driving down the road where a storage bay has popped open or something like that. There's been times where I haven't even locked these and I haven't worried about it because they are extremely well uh, made and they lock very, very well. So as you can see, a lot of room here. This is one of the pass-through storage bays. It's a completely enclosed chassis rail in here. So you can place things underneath or on top of the chassis rail. So we have more storage than we know what to do with at this time. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. The other thing I'll mention while we're on this side of the RV is that you have a nice exterior TV. So you can hang out here under the patio awning, watch TV, live your best life. Coming over here to the back of the Forza, we have four deep cycle marine batteries that come on board fully loaded whenever you buy it. And then you do have room to add a couple more if you wanna do that. It's a 6.7 liter Cummins engine here in the back. And we do have our Blue Ox tow bar hooked up here already, as you can see. We've been towing a 2002 Honda CRV with the Forza, and so far we've taken about 5,000 miles. It's worked really, really well, but you'll definitely want to make sure and double check the weight of your vehicle before you decide to hook it up and just see how much it weighs with your weight once you're fully loaded down and everything like that. One thing I wanna stop and mention right here is probably one of my favorite features on this entire rig. I think it's really underrated, but it's the Truma Aquago hot water heater. And this is going to be instant on demand, whatever you want to call it, hot water. You do have 50 amp shore power. And so this is going to be your 50 amp shore power connection right over here. So you have a nice big cabinet for your 50 amp shore connection. And then also back here, you have your diesel exhaust fluid fill. I would say that we've probably refilled our DEF every three or four times that we filled up. Uh, gas wise so it hasn't been incredibly often but it's something you will have to do on a regular basis this is the part of the tour where i'm going to try not to rise up and knock my head on the side of the door so we're going to continue on with the wet bay section of this rv one of the features that is really useful is going to be an outdoor shower that you actually have here on the forza and so we parked in destin florida for a month earlier this year and we would go and watch the beach one of the nicest things was being able to come back and hose off of this and it is connected to the AquaGo so you can have nice hot water if you come back and you don't have to freeze your butt off, which is really convenient. In this rig, we do have two gray tanks. So in the front of the RV with the kitchen and the front bathroom, that's going to be on one gray tank. And then the back bathroom is going to be on your second gray tank. We have rarely filled up the rear bathroom. And so you have a lot of gray tank storage, especially if you're thinking about boondocking or you know, if you have to go stay at a family's house for a period of time and you don't have a dump, you will be able to go quite some time just by filling up your gray tanks. And then of course you have your black tank as well. 
I wanna point out a couple other things here in your wet bay. One is you have control of your water pump from here. And then you also have a black waste tank flush. And so you can hook up a water hose and flush out your black tank to make sure that you're keeping that nice and clean, which is really useful there as well. And you also have a lot of room to put all of your dump hoses, which I just touched and I'm gonna have to wash my hands before I shake your hand. So there's plenty of room. It's a really great wet bay. And I think that's pretty much everything that I wanna point out over here. And you have a water filter over here, which is good because we all need clean water. All right, moving on. And the last thing I wanted to mention before going inside the Forza is you do have a 6,000 watt Onan generator so you can power everything if you're off grid or it's just a hot day and you pull over and you need to run an AC or something like that. All right, that does it for the outside. Let's go take a look at the inside of the Forza. You're gonna like it. We're gonna start at the very entryway in the Forza. There's a couple things I like to point out here. One, Winnebago did a really good job just with some of the aesthetics and the branding coming into the coach. So it really is nothing from a usability perspective, but I think it just looks really, really nice. Whenever you come into the RV, you've got nice stitching, stitch craft team, you did really well. And a couple of things I wanna point out up here is that you have the multiplex system. If you're not familiar, essentially, this is gonna allow you to be able to control the lights all throughout the coach from multiple locations, whether you're in the bedroom or right up here in the front. The one that we use a lot in the front is the light master on an off switch. So if we're leaving, we can just hit light master off and we know that all the lights are gonna go off as well as some of the vents, uh, the airflow vents throughout the coach, those are gonna turn off as well. You also have all the buttons up here to control your house batteries and chassis batteries. So if you're gonna be storing the fours at any given time, you can turn those off as well as the steps if you wanna have those off or on coming or going. And then the last thing is you have a fire extinguisher. And one of the features that we've been using more often than not is actually the step cover feature. I'll show you what it looks like real quick. This is great for drive days so that the passenger has a place to put her feet and also really good for baby proofing so our daughter does not fall down the stairs. Now let's move into the driver's seat. Insurance paperwork. One of the questions I had before we moved into a 40 foot RV from a 32 foot class A gas was how much different would the driving experience be in a diesel versus gas? First of all, I would say the biggest difference is I actually get to pass people on the interstate, which has been kind of fun. But from a turning perspective and navigating on highways and interstates, it really hasn't, for me at least, been that big of a difference in driving a 40 foot versus a 32 foot RV. The first time I took it out, I could tell my back end swings out obviously a little bit more than I was used to, but otherwise it's something you adjust to rather quickly. Up here in the front, as I mentioned already, the Forza is built on the Freightliner chassis and it uses what's called the Drive Tech technology by Freightliner. And the whole idea behind the Drive Tech technology, it's a lot of tech words, <laughs> is that it's meant to feel more automotive up here in the front of the RV. Some of the older models, even though this is our first one, whenever we toured the Winnebago factory, I looked at some of the older Freightliner chassis and some of the forward reverse mechanisms were over here on the side. In drive tech, essentially, you have everything right up here around the steering wheel, just like you would on an automotive vehicle. With drive tech, you can customize a bunch of the screens that you're looking at on your odometer. So if you wanna look at how many miles you have till empty, if you wanna look at your engine load or any of those things, you can basically cycle through and view different things as you're driving, which is really useful. You also have the OptiView display system over here. So you have a nice screen. So when you're changing lanes, you can see if there are any cars next to you, also control your phone, Bluetooth, and all of that good stuff. And then over here on my left side is where you're going to be able to control things like the MCB blackout shade in the front of the RV, as well as a one touch uh, button generator to turn on your generator from up here in the front. You can also turn on the generator in the back. And lastly, up here in the front, you have your hydraulic jack system. So you're able to auto level, auto retract your jacks from up here in the front. And that's a really nice feature. These chairs also are going to swivel around as well as the passenger seat. So if you're entertaining or just wanna leave these facing in, which we do all the time. Up here above me, we have a nice bed. It's rated to sleep up to 500 pounds. So if you have friends coming over and stay, this will slide down. There's a button over here that we can press to turn that down. The ignition has to be engaged. The key has to be engaged in order for this to come down. And then you have a ladder, which is really useful to entertain people. And over here is kind of a hidden feature, but very useful. It's something we're actually using right now. 
which is the Wi-Fi repeater. So if you're in the back of a campground or if you're camping in a friend's driveway or something like that and you're further away from the Wi-Fi signal, it will repeat it and then broadcast it, rebroadcast it out through the rest of the RV. So it's cool that Winnebago is starting to look at adding new tech into the RVs like this. Now I'm gonna throw it over to Alyssa who's gonna show off the rest of the living space. Before we get into the details of the Forza, I wanna just point out the overall interior design here. In diesel RVs, you're gonna get a lot of the same amenities. You're gonna get the nice luxury floors, but some interiors get to be a little bit much where you can tell they're just adding in things to give it a higher end vibe, like mirrors on the ceiling. Winnebago went the opposite direction and gave us this really simple neutral interior. This is what they call their transitional interiors. And the idea is that whatever design you want to bring into the RV is going to work in this space. So if you want modern, if you want nautical, if you want woodsy, it's all going to match because we've got this driftwood gray here on our cabinets. We've got white countertops. We've got neutral colors on the fabrics and anything you bring in will work which means that the stainless steel refrigerator matches perfectly. We have a residential fridge here, which means I've got an ice maker here in the freezer, and I've got plenty of space here inside. This fridge is gonna run on your battery power using your inverter, so like when you're driving down the road, it'll run on your generator and it'll run on your electrical power. But since it is a residential fridge, make sure you use the little lock that Winnebago inserted so that the doors don't fly open when you're driving. Now moving into the kitchen, you've got your pantry right here, conveniently located next to your stove and your oven. The shelves here are fully adjustable along this track, so you can set them at whatever height that you want. There's actually an additional shelf that we took out so that we could fit our cutting boards in here. I love to cook, so this is where I spend a lot of time here in the RV, and there's a lot of space to work with in this kitchen. You can see there's a cover that comes over this three burner gas stove. So you can effectively double your counter space just by closing this lid here, which is amazing. Up above your stove, you've got a convection oven and microwave that can fit a big 13 by nine casserole dish. So essentially there's nothing that you can't cook in this RV. There's plenty of space in the oven. This is the biggest oven I've ever seen in any RV and we've been in a lot. So you can double the counter space whenever you have the stove cover down, which you can see you already have a ton of counter space, including sink covers that are, these are actually made out of the same stuff that the countertop is made out of. They're heavy duty. You can set stuff on top of them. So maybe you're entertaining friends. You want to set up a buffet line of food. You can totally do that. You have plenty of space here as well as a lot of storage here up above your kitchen area. But one thing that I think really sets apart this kitchen and just shows a lot of intentional thinking when it comes to designing a kitchen in an RV, this is a really small space and every single inch of it needs to be functional. And this little corner right here, otherwise would just be dead space in the RV. This is where the slide out ends. You don't wanna put anything there because when it comes in, you don't wanna block your walkway, right? But they took this little bit of corner jutted out the counter space just enough to where you can set a cookbook here so that you can have it for reference when you're baking. You can plug in a coffee maker and you can really use this little corner that otherwise would have been useless to actually have a lot of function. At the risk of sharing a little too much, we also have enough room down here for our trash can and cleaning supplies and all those things that you wanna keep hidden away. Now, one thing that I love, you may notice how loud the cabinets are whenever you close them. That's because they are latching closed, which means our one-year-old cannot open them and get into them. Basically, the RV is already baby-proof. Huge perk. Now, talking about the dinette. You've got a standard four-person booth. We actually have chairs on board that I'll talk about in a second, so you can sit a fifth person here. You've got the table space for it. And this converts into a bed, probably easier than I've ever seen a dinette convert before. All you gotta do is flip the lever, push, there you go. You've got the cushions right here that will go on top of your table. And it makes into a little bit less than a full size bed so it can sleep one adult comfortably or two kids. You've also got storage underneath each side of the booth so we've got blankets and diapers and wipes and things like that because we do travel with our daughter. 
Who buckles in back here? That's a big concern, safety on the road. You've got seat belts that are gonna tuck in. They're actually stored underneath this dinette booth right now so that it's not cluttered whenever you're just living in the house area, but you can also safely latch in a car seat and travel. Onto the living space. You've got a lot of space. We mentioned earlier that we've got slide outs opposing right here. Now, when they come in, they don't touch. So you do still have a walkway. You can walk from the cab all the way to the edge of the bed. That's all gonna be an open walkway for you. You can access the bathroom as well. But whenever they're open, you have a ton of floor space right here. Perfect for a family like us when we need a little bit of space for a baby to be running around in here. Now let's talk entertainment. The Forza has this huge flat screen TV built in here that you can angle, maybe if you're watching towards the dinette, or maybe you're sitting in those front seats and you can pull it all the way out and turn it so you can really see it anywhere from the living area. And then to put it away, you just push it up against the wall. Now this is a smart TV. So you can watch your Netflix, your Hulu, your Disney Plus, whatever it is that you use on the internet to watch TV can be equipped in the apps right here on the Samsung. Also, the TV is connected to a sound bar right here, along with the subwoofer, which you might have noticed the big black box underneath the dinette booth. Is that going to go? That's your base. So whenever you're watching a scary movie in the RV late at night, this whole thing is going to fill up with sound. You have additional storage as well as a DVD player right above the TV. And right beneath it, you've got your fireplace. So this electric fireplace does put off heat. We've used it a ton in the winter. It's blowing out heat right now, even though it's 80 degrees outside. And you could control a lot of little lights and fun features with this as far as changing the colors of the flames, changing the color of your backlight back here. And then you can also set a timer on it. So if you want it to be on for a couple hours and then turn itself off, you can set that sleep mode as well. Gives great vibes on cold mornings. Okay, let's take a break. And one of the comfiest spots in this RV, this isn't just a couch. This is what they call theater style seating. So I pull the lever right here and just lean on back. They have these trays built in right here that swivel if you wanna set your snacks on there. And then you've got these hidden cup holders right here as well. So there's really no need to ever get up from the couch. You've got everything you need in arm's distance, even a little USB charger so you can charge your phone. A small design feature that I love in this floor plan is this little bar shelf, whatever you want to call it, behind the sofa. It just creates an opportunity for us to add a little bit of our own personality and style into the RV. So we've got photos, we've got fake plants and things that give the RV a real homey feel because we travel full time in it right now and this is our home. Now I want to show you just one more room before I let Heath take over the tour again. This is the guest bathroom. This is a full bathroom. You've got a sink, you've got a toilet, and you have a full size shower. Now I'm only five foot two, but you do have a ton of space in here and you'll see in both showers, you can sit. The sliding shower door does have a lock on it, so it's not going to be sliding open and closed while you're driving. And then in each bathroom, as well as in the kitchen, you have one of these max air fans. You can set different fan speeds and you can also turn on a rain sensor so that if it does start raining, it will close for you so your floors don't get wet. That's the bathroom and I'll hand it off to Heath in the office. One of the features that is specific to the 38D floor plan on the Forza is this beautiful six foot long desk that you can actually customize. We have a cabinet right here in between mine and Alyssa's workstation where we have a bunch of random stuff, but you can actually take it and move it around. So if you wanna have just a long underneath, a lot of open floor space underneath this desk, you can definitely do that. This is the first time Winnebago has put this big of a dedicated workspace in desks in a RV. But you can actually, if you aren't working and you're watching this saying like, I just want to relax, I'm I'm not working right now, I'm getting the RV to travel. This can actually just be a bunk, it comes with the RV. You can put a mattress on top of this and just use it as a place to sleep or you can be like us and use it as a workspace. Actually it looks kind of cool like this. 
even have Fortnite if you wanted to. I don't know. <laughs> but this is where we spend a lot of time. We both work on the road. And so this has been an amazing thing for us to have. Normally, we have to take our laptops and move them to the dinette and move them back and forth. And by having a dedicated workspace on board, we can effectively leave our stuff here all the time. We know this is where we come to get some work done. Our daughter doesn't know that, so she still comes up and tries to hug our leg while we're over here. But nonetheless, for us as full-time travelers who are working on the road, having a dedicated desk space on board has been incredible. And there's also enough room to store our daughter's toys underneath there. So that's where we put those. A couple other things about this desk space that I really like is there are some mesh nets up here. So miscellaneous cords and things like that, you can basically just throw them right above your desk so they're just not everywhere. And there's also pre-drilled holes both above and below the desk. So if you're running wires or if you have a printer set up or something like that, you don't have to keep all of that here. You can hide it so there's not a lot of cords everywhere, which is really, really nice. Just like the rest of the Forza, there's LED lights over here at the desk as well. So you have a strip of lights up here and then there's one over here. So you have a lot of good light space if you need that for coloring or writing, or as my friend Ryan Roski says, doing puzzles at the desk. The last room on the tour is kind of funny. Normally RVs are just one room tours. You just point to everything, say this is the living room, this is the kitchen, but we actually have an office space. And now we're going to the bedroom and the second bathroom. Look at all these rooms you can have in a 40 foot RV. So a couple things I want to point out is we have the bedroom slide over here to my left and over here my right we have a really good size closet this is my side Alyssa's side and then you also have four large drawers down here so this one is the most organized because our daughters and her clothes are very tiny so a lot of really good pass through closet space over here and you also have a tv here in the bedroom that comes down so if you want to hang out and watch tv in bed you got another tv back here to be able to do that in the bedroom of the Forza, you have a lot of really good walking space here between the bed and the closet. Whenever the slide is in, the bed does come all the way up and push up against the dresser drawers. So if you want to get to the back bathroom, you can do that, but you have to climb over the bed. For us, this is really nice because our daughter's pack and play goes here at the foot of our bed and it's about yay big. And so we still have about this much room to walk through. Uh, so depending on what you need at the foot of your bed, whether it's a small bed for a dog, or maybe you have a little kid in a pack and play, you have enough room over here to put something like that, which is really nice. Looking over here at the bed, you have a queen size bed, which is a Freedom Air, and it has this little handy remote. So Alyssa can adjust her softness on the bed and I can adjust my hardness. It's also our daughter's favorite toy. As soon as we leave the back of the RV, she typically picks this thing up and puts both of our beds on the most firm setting. So when we come and jump at the back of the bed, it feels like concrete. It's kind of funny. I think, I guess she thinks it's funny. Anyway, it's really nice if you and your partner like to have different softness and hardness on your side of the bed. Also over here, you have about enough width to place a good book or a Kindle. And something else that's really cool is there is a Kinex charger. So this is a wireless charging for your smartphone. So you can just set it right here on the side of the bed and charge it up. And there's also 110 outlets and USB ports on both sides of the bed. So you have plenty of USB ports throughout the entire RV and then also on multiple on side each side of the bed. As I mentioned earlier, you have the multiplex system throughout the coach and you also have it right here above the bed so I can hit master off. Now it's really dark in here <laughs> and master on. And it's really nice because you can control that right from your bed. So you don't have to get up and like worry about turning off lights or anything like that. And it's something that we use all the time. You also have a nice headboard and two really good sized windows here on either side of the slides. Usually there's a better view on one side of the RV. And honestly, you can wake up and just let the light flood in and live your best life. I actually love these windows. We open them, that's the first thing we do every morning. So moving on, we're gonna take a look at the bathroom. Oh, first I wanna show you this. You have a really big size pocket door right here. So I'm gonna slide it closed. This is really nice if you're having company or something like that over so you can have your separation. So I'm gonna step over here and go into the bathroom. Before I go into the bathroom, I just want to address the fact that you have a full-size mirror, which is pretty cool. This is your rear bathroom or your master bathroom, whatever you want to call it. You have a slightly larger shower. It feels about the same, as well as a washer and dryer that are separate. So you've, over here, we've got a dryer, which is amazing to have on board when you have a little one or a messy person like me. And over here, you have your washer. So them being separated, they're slightly larger than some RVs that kind of have the all-in-one combo washer dryer. 
This is a luxury I didn't really think about much before we had one. We RV'd for four years and we always just went to laundromats and things like that. Having them on board has been kind of a game changer. I don't think I'll ever want to have another RV without having a washer and dryer on board. It's been amazing. The toilet in the rear bath is my preferred toilet because it feels more like a residential style toilet and you also have a water save mode and a high flush mode, I think is the official term for what I'm gonna call it. But basically you can do different levels of flushing and it's just a little bit of a nicer style toilet, more like you'd have in a home or something than you'd have in an RV. You also have a lot of storage back here. We don't even fill up all these cabinets, but you have storage over the washer, under the counter, as well as behind the mirror is more storage. So storage galore, if you need a lot of places to store toiletries and things like that, you've got plenty of space. One more thing I wanna show you before the end of this tour. The last thing I want to show off in the Forza is the Firefly system. This is where you're going to be able to manage all of your tank levels. You can extend your slides from here, control all of your max fans, and basically do anything that you need to on your coach as well as turn on the water pump and things like that. So you could just flip through these screens. Here I'm looking at all of our lights so I can go to our main lights, our rear lights. You're able to control your temperature on here as well, including your furnace, your heat pump, which you'll have on the rear AC unit and you do have two AC units on the Forza so you can control all of that right here directly on the Firefly system. Right below the Firefly we have the Truma AquaGo dial so this is where you're going to be able to control all of your hot water and your on-demand hot water from Truma. That is the entire walkthrough of the Forza. Hopefully we address some of the high level questions that you might have if you're thinking about getting in a rig like this and really excited to be able to do this walkthrough video. Thank you for watching it.